Good evening. My name is Danielle Lee, and on behalf of ISEC Life's board and our team and the organizing committee for the 60th, we would like to welcome you to Chicago for this 60th anniversary. I am personally grateful and humbled to see each and every one of you here. Thank you for making the effort to be present here right now. Our theme for the event, if you haven't noticed, is creating history together. Each of us has our own ISEC story. And for me, as an alum, I look back on my time and I know it shaped who I am today. When I landed in Manila, Philippines for my traineeship back in 1993, I never expected that I would meet Imelda Marcos or stand in front of a table covered with loose firearms that had been bought to gain the current president's good favor. However, the one thing I truly learned and carry with me today is empathy. As we learn to interact with different cultures, we must have empathy and put judgment aside. We don't know their story unless we take time to live it and learn. For seven months during my traineeship, six hours a day with no power was normal, and it became mine. While this is not a way to run an economy, I became more empathetic to their challenges. I'm not very good with this technology stuff. Slide. So, when the power was out at my house Wednesday night, trying to pack to come here, <clears throat> no need to get upset, find a headlamp, improvise and carry on. <clears throat> it made me laugh and it reminded my daughter that for us, it was only temporary but not always for others. And still it is true today for many countries where ISEC exists. As the executive director, I keep this with me as I look to move ISEC forward for the students and the alumni both. One of the ways we are doing that is with this event tonight. Let's take just a few minutes to recognize some of the key sponsors that made this all possible. Slide. <laughs> Uh, first, we have UPS, thanks to Paul Hamill. Woo! And, and thank you, UPS, for taking multiple trainees all the time. And we also have, and this is amazing, the WLS Spencer Foundation. Um, this was the grant that enabled the LCPs to travel here, be with us tonight, and celebrate this amazing thing. After everybody's had a seat, I'm going to ask the LCPs or the LC representatives to just please stand around this room, please. So, Jack and Susie Wadsworth, Jack in particular is an ISEC alumnus. He has done amazing things prior to just this. And um, if it weren't for some investment that he made back in the 90s uh, that actually started ISEC China, we sent an envoy to start China, which is now the number one country in AI. I could be wrong. Max, am I wrong? Uh, <laughs> but 
We sent an envoy, and Lily Hine happens to be here in the room. She was one of those women that went there and got it started. There she is. <laughs> Slide. <laughs> so those were our diamond sponsors, our platinum sponsors. At the uh, 10, 000, so the other ones were 20,000 or higher. Our platinum sponsors are at $10,000 or higher. We have the illustrious Eric Anderson, who's on the U.S. Board of Directors. Yes. So, <laughs> I don't know. he might be with the band. So Eric is with Fossil, and he donated some of those fabulous watches that you got a chance to win earlier tonight. And he will be providing the entertainment later tonight with the Ray Band. We're pleased, pleased, pleased to have him. So thank you, Eric. And KPMG, thank you so much. Andrew Lewis over here. So KPMG, for those of you who don't know, provided space on the 55th floor of the ION building for the Youth Speak Forum, which happened yesterday during the day and was a great event. And they also were um, generous enough to host both the ISEC US board meeting and the ISEC Life board meetings. So thank you. And our gold sponsors at $5,000 or higher, we have some fabulous alumni in this mix. Frank Fodi and his wife, Brenda. <laughs> Tom Gooley and Polly Colotis. I think they're over here somewhere. And one of the board members from ISEC Life, Jerry Allison. We love you. <laughs> There's also an amazing contingent of alumni who donated at many different levels, especially when we needed to match uh, a minimum of $10,000 for that WLS grant. So to all those alumni who donated even the lowest amounts to almost these higher levels, thank you, because all of these young people are gonna benefit, so thank you. Slide. <laughs> so, oh, we're out of order. Oh dear, that's all right. It's okay. I'm going to punt. It's all good. So if you hadn't had the chance last night at one of your era gatherings or maybe during the reception that was going on out there, um, one of the amazing gifts that we have here tonight is to have a few individuals from the 50s and the 60s who are the pioneers and the trailblazers who made this organization here in the United States what it is today. And I would really like these individuals to please stand and just know that we are so grateful. Uh, Lionel Simons, Jerry Allison, Boyd Griffin, Alan Cohn, Victor Lowenstein, Ken Phillips, Mike Ross, Ron Walker. Thank you for being here. So in addition, uh, we have, and this is just fantastic, um, there are amazing contingent of ISEC US former NCPs and MCPs. I believe there are 16 in all in the room, in addition to a couple of former MCPs, as you just recently heard, who sang beautifully for us. Um, not only do we have all of these MCPs present, we also have so many national, former national staffers in attendance tonight. So we are so grateful to have you here. So moving from the national level to the international level, we'll just tell you a tiny bit. There are three individuals in the room, which is really fantastic. So Victor Lowenstein, I mentioned his name just a minute ago. If you have not had a chance to meet this gentleman, you make every effort to go find him and introduce yourself. There he is. <laughs> he
He made his way here from Brussels, and just so you know, he was the first ever elected Secretary General for ISIC International back in 1961. So thank you for being here. <laughs> uh, Boyd Griffin is around here somewhere. Where's Boyd? Boyd is here somewhere. Boyd, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Boyd Griffin is the first U.S. individual to um, elevate to the international level, and he was Secretary General in 1969 to 70. Thanks, Boyd. <laughs> and over here, um, gratefully for me, a member of the ISEC Life team, we have Heather Blonick, who was not only... <laughs> She was not only the MCP, then she became what we now call, let's go to back to that alphabet soup, the now PAI, so. <laughs> so I'd like to just ask everybody a really quick question. Show of hands, how many people um, have been on a transatlantic flight? Yes, excellent, almost the whole room, right? Um, okay, so it was most of you. How many of you have been on a cross-country, cross-continent train trip or road trip? Yes, a lot of you. All right, try this one. How many of you have been on a transatlantic ship? Not a cruise liner. <laughs> yes, of course. I should have been. <laughs> oh. There's a couple. Fantastic. So it's not very common. The numbers went down significantly. We live in a very mobile society, and it's become quite easy. Um, it wasn't like that in the early days, um, as, uh, in the early days of ISEC. And as we were planning for this event, uh, one of my tasks was trying to network and reconnect with some of these amazing pioneers around the room. And if it weren't for their help, helping me connect the dots, it would have been really difficult. And they've also shared their stories. And I'd like to just share one of them with you because it, was, uh, it really touched me. Um, with Victor's help, I managed to get in touch with the man who was the PCCP, or the Presiding Country Committee President. There we go, I got it right. In 1956, when we became a country in ISEC, International. His name is Victor, um, Vittorio Tanzi, and I actually got to speak with him over Skype uh, back in March, and uh, it, it was amazing. Um, and <laughs> as it turns out, he happened to be one of our first trainees here in the U.S. Guess how he got here? <laughs> A transatlantic ship. <laughs> and uh, it was a 14-day journey. <laughs> uh, see, he was Italian, and Isaac in Italy had just partnered with, and I'm going to butcher this, but Acache de Corneliano, a steel company that had purchased coal from Virginia and shipped it to Genoa. And they uh, had just built some brand new ships, and they had two really fancy staterooms on these ships, only two and not much else. <laughs> uh, and so when he finished his term, he and his new wife came to the US on a freight ship <laughs> for his traineeship. And uh, he actually did two traineeships. He did one with uh, Equitable Life, and then he took another, and that one was only three months, and then he took another one for a year with, of all things, Oliveta. And um, how many of you know what Oliveta used to be or was? Okay, so there's only a few. Um, any of you young people have any idea? No, yeah. So can everybody hold up their mobile phone? Do you have your mobile phone? Okay, so you get to type on those all the time, right? So before mobile phones were these things called typewriters. <laughs> he did a traineeship with a typewriter company. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> You can only find them in museums now. <laughs> um, the organization has clearly come a very long way since then, um, and it would not have happened without the influence and the efforts of these pioneering, trailblazing individuals. Um, 
And now we look to you young people to continue to drive things forward. Um, and so we wish you well, we support you, and we're grateful to have you here to, to take it forward. Um, thank you. Enjoy your evening, and thank you all so very much for being here.